Okay, so pertaining to Bernie Sanders' climate plan, um, there's obviously going to be a lot of haters out there. Um, as I said, there might be some people who are going to be like, eh, this isn't progressive enough, especially since he gave it the same name that um, AOC gave the plan, Green New Deal, and when in reality it doesn't seem to be that much of a Green New Deal. But, you know, it's understandably going to be a lot of critics out there who are going to say, you know, they're going to want more. In my opinion, his Green New Deal seems very extensive. I obviously just went through it for you guys, and it's it's pretty detailed, I would say. Um, but then, amazingly... He's actually getting criticized by this, well, it's not that surprising, but it's, you know, by this idiot that works for Mother Jones, which is supposedly a progressive magazine. Mother Jones was a big um, advocate for unions, and she, back in the day, let me read, read who she is real quick. Her name was Mary Harris Jones. Mother Jones was her basically her kind of moniker i guess and she was an irish-born american school teacher and dressmaker who became prominent organized labor representative community organizer and activist she helped coordinate major strikes and f co-founded the industrial workers of the world so this the, this organization or whatever this publication decided to name itself mother jones in reality they are not progressive or in favor of unions or you know far to the left at all like the actual mother joneses so this poor woman is probably you know rolling over in her grave seeing her her name being used for this ridiculous publication that's you know basically i don't know what to call it toxic you know anti-progressive totally ridiculous totally you know absurd you know filled with a bunch of ex absurd hacks basically who for some reason, didn't hate Bernie Sanders, even though I guarantee the actual Mother Jones would actually probably be enamored with Bernie Sanders and his ideas. Anyway, so, but I, di I digress from the actual Mother Jones. I want to get to this article here. So, the, the author of this article, his name is Kevin Drum. He has been attacking Bernie Sanders for a long time, I think ever since 2016 maybe sooner but certainly since 2016 2017 roughly and he has just been fucking just railing against bernie sanders for like the stupidest obviously unsurprisingly stupidest reasons out there and i think is probably one of the only mother jones um writers to be doing that and the article that he recently the recently he wrote here which isn't too long it's like a couple minutes long yeah, about three minutes long. It's so absurd. So, he responds to Bernie Sanders' climate change plan. And he says, in the title, he says, Bernie Sanders gets a D- minus for his climate plan. <laughs> so, what does he base this on? So, let's check it out. Let's, you know, let's give this asshole uh, the benefit of the doubt and assume that his, his argument is legitimate. So, check this out. So he says, Bernie Sanders released his climate change plan today, and Bernie being Bernie, it was naturally the biggest, leftist, most social socialist plan out there, and that was the good part. The bad part is that it's practically designed to fail. <gasps> oh no. So, obviously, it must be a horrible plan, right? So he's obviously going to get into how these ideas are just ridiculous, and he disagrees with them, and it's just, you know... It's just not a good idea. So, like a lot of like conservatives and Republicans say, basically, <laughs> you're going to be surprised to find out that's not the case. So he says, if you're going to propose a massive sixteen trillion dollar plan, the first thing you should do is get as many people on board as possible. Instead, Sanders practically rebels in pissing off as many stakeholders as possible. <laughs> He's going to tax the rich, he's going to hobble the fossil fuel industry, he's going to ban nuclear power, he's going to nationalize electric generation and turn it over to the federal government. What the fuck is wrong with that? Is All of a sudden that's a bad thing now? So is Bernie Sanders, what is he supposed to do? Is he supposed to, you know, go out and cheerlead in favor of nuclear power and, and kiss up, kiss ass, of, kiss the ass of the, the fossil fuel industry? Yeah, apparently you are. But those are the kind of things you would expect to hear from, you know, corporate Democrats and, and obviously Republicans and, you know, the likes of Donald Trump and all his cronies. This is a supposedly 
progressive social, even maybe even socialist leftist publication named after a pub, somebody that was actually socialist and leftist. They're actually arguing that those things, doing those things where you're calling out those, you know, big capitalistic corporate, you know, you know, institutions is a bad thing. That's apparently a bad thing now. So let's continue here. It says, and then there are the absurd promises. He's going to create 20 million new union jobs. And then in parentheses, it says, no, he's not unless he also creates 20 million new human beings. <laughs> We've got 360, we've got 300, what is it, 30 or 40 million people in this country. How do you have to create 20 new human beings, 20 million new human beings? Anyway, so he says he's going to eliminate fossil fuels by 2030 at the latest. And then in parentheses again, it says, I don't think even the most optimistic environmentalist thinks we can build out solar and win that fast. Okay. And then he says, electricity will be virtually free by 2035. And then he puts in parentheses, oh, please. Wow. Very, very uh, pithy uh, response there. Oh, please. So basically, this article so far just consists of this asshole just whining about what well, we can't do. We can't do this and we can't do that. And this is impossible and that's impossible. And then next he says, and then there is the spirit spending it says two trillion dollars to weatherize homes another two trillion to allow people to trade in their old gas burners for electric vehicles half a trillion to replace school buses a trillion dollars for public transit and high-speed rail i'm open and he says i'm open to expert and opinion on this but everything i know about climate change tells me that this is an enormous amount to spend on things that will have only modest impacts <laughs> Are you telling me that getting rid of, like, actually fixing those things, weatherizing homes, you know, replacing school uh, school buses with, like, actual, like, energy-efficient school buses, getting rid of cars with electric vehicles, that's not a small thing. That's a big deal. Those are all things that that um, contribute to the the emitting of, of CO2s and, you know, fossil fuels and stuff into our, into our, you know, atmosphere. So what are you talking about? And this guy's like, oh, but I'm open to expert opinion. And he says, but everything I know about climate change, oh, clearly you don't know anything about climate change if you claim that these things are all small. And the next thing he says here, but at least Sanders will also dedicate huge amounts to R&D, which is research and development, right? He says right at the top that he'll make massive, develop, I'm sorry, massive investments in new research. But down in the details, R&D appears to get eight tri eight billion dollars, only a little more than he'd spend on school buses. Well, hold on, but how much? Okay, how much do you really need to spend on research and development? It's not like the things that Bernie Sanders wants to do, you know, that is put that the ideas that he's putting out there are like, oh, hmm, I can't quite figure this out yet. Like it's it's very unknown and it's very you know. It's, you know, not a lot of people know about it. Like, they're probably researching that shit right now. So how much more did they have to put into it? They've already researched, they're researching it now, or they've already researched it. So to claim, like, oh, the R&D is not enough because he's spending um, only a little more, he's spending on R&D than he, he would on school buses. So, I mean, the comparison is ridiculous. Just because you're not spending a ton of money on R&D doesn't mean he's not doing R&D. Because the R&D has already been done, especially when it comes to research. People are researching this crazy, this shit like crazy. And then development is just, you know, developing the, the, the essentially the technology, which we already have. So I don't, I don't know what this guy's talking about. And besides, you can probably come up with like cost efficient ways of developing this kind of, this kind of technology. It's not like it's cost like millions, billions, trillions, you know, quadrillions of dollars. No, but this guy, obviously he's a, he's an expert, right? So he would know about how everything's, you know, all the costs of everything apparently. Um, and then he says, this is a wild mismatch. Sanders appears to be more interested in creating a huge federal jobs program than he is in seriously taking on climate change. So what is he supposed to do? He's supposed to create jobs. That's the whole point. What are you going to do? You're going to create. So what are you going to do? You're going to create, you're going to get rid of obviously all like the, the, you know, the big, you know, it, essentially the, obviously, like I said before, the, you know, the, the, the gas companies and the, you know, the, the ones that are emitting fossil fuels into the air and stuff, you know, you know, poisoning our waters and poisoning our air and stuff. You got to replace those with something. So you're going to create jobs for the people that are going to be working in the newer, you know, so yeah, factories and stuff. So you're going to create these new, you know, environmental 
basically factories or whatever you want to call them, environmental, you know, basically institutions. And then you have to fund, you have to, you have to have workers there and you have to fund it somehow. And then you have to give you, you know, you have to pay those people money. Apparently this guy's idea is like, no, you shouldn't be, pay, you shouldn't be worrying about the jobs that are going to be existing in those, you know, in those places. So replacing the power plants and factories and, you know, all those things somehow, you know, I guess those places are going to be operated by robots, I guess. <laughs> this guy, I guess, wants to, you know, supporting automation or something. So, I mean, obviously, again, he shows that he has no idea what climate change is. And apparently he doesn't know anything about jobs that are in, in the climate change kind of, you know, industry either. And the final paragraph here, he says, the Sanders plan looks to me like the worst kind of kitchen sink proposal, a quote unquote plan that avoids making any hard choices by simply saying that we'll do everything. Call me cranky, but I'm tired of this stuff. It's a box checking exercise designed to appeal to every possible lefty constituency rather than something that has even the remotest chance of building the public support needed to get it passed through Congress. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know what to say to that. Yeah, I'm going to call you cranky because you're a cranky idiot and you don't know anything. You don't know anything about climate change. You don't know anything about pushing ideas that it's actually going to save our planet. You just want to have a reason to complain, basically. That's what it looks like. And then he writes a postscript script. He says, it's probably worth noting that I haven't looked at the climate plans from other candidates. I don't think you've looked at Bernie's climate plan, but okay. And he says, so I'm not comparing Sanders to anyone else. For all I know, all the other plans are just as bad. Well, I'll tell you right now, the plans that any other and like I said, for any other politician is pushing more, is not going to be that great. <laughs> I can I can assure you that it's not that good. Um, but yeah, this guy's a moron, man. He does. I don't even know what he's he's talking out of his fucking ass, making all this stuff up about how like, oh yeah, well, you know, this is totally like a checkbox for for leftists and stuff. Like, okay, so I mean, I don't get it. This is the thing. These these people they say these things. They fucking gaslight and. You know, give all these like make all these complaints and stuff, and they do they don't do anything to actually address it, like to address the specific like, like he didn't even give any like when he uh, like opposed all these ideas that Bernie's pushing, he didn't even give a reason. He just basically said, "Oh, we can't do this because we can't do that, and this is too expensive." And then you're you know giving a lot of promises that you can't keep, and then you know you just want to uh, give a checklist to leftists. And blah. Okay, you might as well just be pushing for ideas that you, you might as well just be, you know, go and agree with the Republican Party or just go join. Obviously, well, obviously he doesn't like anything that Bernie Sanders says. So he, you know, he wants to go and agree with, you know, the shitty plans that, you know, Kamala Harris and Elizabeth Warren and all those people are pushing for, which is, you know, nothing. It's It's just basically stupid, you know, neoliberal you know half measure type stuff so and by the way i don't know if you guys may have heard it i'm sure a good chunk of progressives definitely heard about it but apparently what's her name elizabeth warren was giving um she gave like her own kind of climate change not not like necessarily the goal i'm not talking about like right now or anything this is a while back it was a couple months ago but she was giving like this climate change statement or something I, I think she mainly seemed to have um um she kind of kind of addressed it on on uh twitter at least from what i know and it was something about like like how like how the problems like so all the problems that are um occurring in so various countries and stuff so apparently like you know middle east and stuff so obviously there's a lot of like you know, obviously the climate in like various Middle East countries is causing a lot of the people in those countries to migrate to other countries because it's so fucking hot. And, you know, you would think she would be addressing something like that, but no, she gets into how this is something that's imp impacting the way the Pentagon operates. And she even released like a whole like article, Team Warren, re you know, released this article, I'll post it for you guys in the, in the, um, description box below but it says um 
It's titled, Our Military Can Help Lead the Fight in Combating Climate Change. <laughs> like, so all of a sudden now she wants to get the military industrial complex involved in, involved in, in, you know, helping, you know, avert climate change or not avert, but kind of, you know, kind of help prevent it, you know, climate change from getting worse. And I'm trying to find the tweet that she, that she talked about. Oh, here it is. I think that's maybe it. So it says climate change is real. It's worsening by the day and it's undermining our military readiness. <gasps> our military readiness is in big trouble. I'm sure Kevin Drum would love this, love this policy. It says more and more accomplishing the mission depends on our ability to continue operations in the face of floods, drought, water, wildfires, these desertification and extreme cold senior military leaders ooh, have warned congress of the national security challenge that climate change poses the military is taking steps to become more energy efficient and resilient but instead of meeting this threat head-on washington ignore is ignoring it and making it worse today i am introducing my defense climate resiliency and readiness act to harden the u.s military against the threat posed by climate change and to leverage its hu high energy huge energy footprint as part of our climate solution the pentagon is the single largest government consumer of energy and it's dependent on fossil fuels to improve military readiness and help us achieve a green new deal the Pentagon should achieve net zero carbon emissions for all its non-combat bases and infrastructure by 2030. We do not have to choose between a green military and an, efficient, and an effective one. My plan will improve our service members' readiness and safety and achieve cost savings for American taxpayers. Together, we can fight climate change and win. I mean, this whole idea is basically from from Hillary, from Elizabeth Warren. I almost said Hillary Clinton. Um, Elizabeth Warren is basically to suck up to the military industrial complex and then so-called fight climate change by by um, making the military more fuel efficient. Now you can make the case, yes, the military is a big you know emitter of fossil fuels and. You know, that's fine. If you want to address that, that's fine. But putting a whole plan about it, I mean, Bernie, I don't know. Yeah, Bernie didn't seem to, I don't know if he did. I didn't read the entire plan. It was very, very, very long. But um, in the beginning of it, I didn't see him say anything about, um, you know, the military being a big emitter of fossil fuels, which whatever. I mean, I'm sure he knows that. But I mean, that's not, like he doesn't want to suck up to the military industrial com complex, which is good. So obviously he wouldn't be, doing something like that but for elizabeth warren to be doing that that's just clearly to me it's just a sign of her wanting to just yeah to suck up to the military industrial content complex and do the things that you know is going to make you know all the establishment democrats be like wow that's a great idea that's awesome yeah i totally agree with that and you know a lot of progressives when this came out they you know called her out and said it's fucking ridiculous which it because it is and yeah i mean again and, you know, again, this, this is these are the kind of ideas that somebody like Kevin Drum, the Mother Jones, you know, author and shit, he would love these kind of things because this is something that you know, it, it benefits the Democratic establishment, and these people are in love with the Democratic establishment. They love what they are doing, and they, you know, they love all the things that they're putting out there because those are the things that, you know, help the, you know, help maintain the status quo. But just doing little, like I said before, doing little tweaks to things. Just little tweaks here and there. You know, just tiny little tweaks. Nothing too ambitious or too far or whatever they call it. Or too radical, whatever the hell you want to call it. So, I mean, look, at the end of the day, Bernie Sanders, again, he has the most detailed and best plan out there for climate change just like he does for criminal justice reform because he goes into the details he puts all these plans out all the other people don't really like even like whatever they might have good plans you know laid out on their websites too i'm sure everybody can you know write out a plan and put it there but do they talk about it a lot do they talk about it in detail do they bring it up constantly um 
and you know I'm going to post uh, you know I was going to post a um, press conference I forgot to mention the last segment but I'm going to post the press conference that Bernie did um, you know discussing his Green New Deal idea so he gets into detail about these things a lot it's not something that he just puts into his website you know makes t-shirts out of or you know says he has a plan for that as Elizabeth Warren does and you know just you know boasts about doing something when he doesn't really do it and he goes into detail and he makes sure to talk about it and dress it as much as possible because he knows it's a big deal and he knows just talk is talk is just talk you can't just talk about something you can't just put in your website you have to get into you know you got to bring it up as much as possible you have to get into the specificities of it and discuss it as much as possible because these are big things that are you know it's a big deal and democrats are just not bringing it up and guys like this prick kevin trump they love it when they don't get into the details because they just want to keep everything at a surface level they don't want to get into details too much because if you make too many promises then you're going to you know you're going to get scoffed at by this by this people like this who are you know apparently not they're not in favor of doing anything and they just say no we can't do this and no we can't do that and you know everything that this is you know everything that bernie sanders wants to do is just too much and oh please and you know i don't even think that's possible it's like okay like who can who can really get behind any kind of like you know get behind behind any kind of article or support any or want to read or article or get pa you know passionate about an article that's you know basically saying that you can't do things you know you can't do this and you can't do that like talk about negativity you know talk about you know not being passionate <laughs> clearly this guy isn't and he like, like i said before he doesn't know shit about climate change either